welcome back everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be you know, showing you a couple of things about how to work with polygons a little bit more. Uh, I already have my mesh imported from the last import. You can import just a regular. I wanted to create a little skirt around my belt. Just a little mini skirt, you know, kind of add some attraction. But I was also going to want to create a split right down the middle so it can kind of fan out on both sides of it. Uh, after I've created. I'm going to show you how to split the polygons without destroying the UV map. Um, and I'm also going to show you in this video, hopefully I'll have time for it, if not it'll be in the next one, of a cylinder. We're going to do the, uh, you know, something around the leg. You know, I'm going to create probably some leg armor. But on top of creating leg armor, I'm also going to show you how to take that leg armor and mirror it so it'll appear on the other leg, you know, an entirely separate object, it'll be its own mesh. But I'm going to show you how to clone this and then mirror it so it is basically a reflection. The entire UMP uh, model is roughly asymmetrical, so if you set something up on just the left-hand side of the body, you know, kind of right down the middle, you set something up over here, you can always clone it and mirror it to match the other side. Well, anyways, back on topic, uh, for working with polygons, the first thing I want to do is I want to locate that UV map uh, where that line is going to go down the middle, because this is just a cylinder and I just deleted the cap segments on the top and the bottom. I'm going to make this a double-sided texture so I don't need to worry about the inner texture. It's just going to show on both sides of this when I'm done. Anyways, uh, what I first I want to do is I want to convert this to an editable mesh. You can't uh, find the UV lines within an editable poly. So after I've converted it to an editable mesh, I'm going to drop down and I'm going to locate my unwrap UVW. And I'm not going to unwrap it yet because I'll do that when I'm all done editing it. Alright, there's my line. That's the line I was looking for. And since this is where I'm going to go ahead and cut this sucker in half, I want this to be right in front of my mesh. So wherever I want to cut this, you know, because I want to create kind of a flapped skirt, you know, in the middle and it's going to go around the whole body. Uh, I want to rotate this to put it kind of dead center so I know exactly where it is. So first I select Edit Mesh and then I select my Element Tool and I right click, select Rotate. We've done this before. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit and find out where I put that line. I kind of have it right in the front. Maybe rotate it back a little bit. So I select that at mesh. Rotate it back just a tad. And as soon as I get it where I... Eh, <laughs> I suck at this. Alright. Maybe just a little bit. There we go. That's pretty close. Now I know that this line is probably sitting on top. In fact, I guarantee you it's sitting on top of a bunch of vertices. There's a line of vertices uh, up and down this line. That's where it decided to set it. There's also where there's vertices, there's also edges. So these edges I want to actually split in half. To do that I'm going to teach you about the uh, edit geometry tools. All right, It's not geometry, it's, but it's specific to this. Once I get that UV map where I want it, I'll just right click and I'll go ahead and uh, convert this to an editable poly. Now if I want to go up here to realistic and I want to set this to uh, hidden lines so I can see those lines. These are the lines where that UV map was deciding that this was going to split in half. You know, this is where one half of the it gets painted because you got to think of this in two dimensions. You know, because on the UV map this is 2D. Uh, it's just a canvas that you paint on. So I want to go ahead and take it right here where the uh, you know the top and the bottom on the canvas would have been, and I'm just going to cut this sucker in half right here. So to do that, I'm going to go over here to my edges tool. And look here, we have this section called Edit Edges. Now if you also notice, since I have an Edit Edges, that means I have an Edit Vertices. And if I select the border, I have Edit Borders. If I select Polygons, I have Edit Polygons. And they usually have roughly the same options in them, you know, differing a little bit. Well, what I want to do is I want to split the edges, so I'm going to select the edge. And then I'm going to hold down my Control key with my Select tool enabled. And I'm going to select each one of these edges right down this middle where I want to cut this thing in half. Now with all of those edges selected, all five of them, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to select my split tool. And it's going to do exactly what it sounds like it's going to do. It's going to split them. So now they are split. So now this polygon is no longer connected to this polygon. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I were to right click and select move, watch what happens. Uh, there it goes. <laughs> I moved it. I had this side connect. They're no longer connected. See, so now I can move this side without this side moving. It's independent. But
but the UV line, the UV map is still here, so when I paint on this, there's not going to be anything weird if I try to use my blur tool. Or I think it's going to be a very uniform texture. It's a really great way if, like, I was forming my breastplate and I wanted to, you know, not have to worry about that line that I put on the side. You could have put the line in the back, did like a little split, and then created some brackets in between them, you know, to kind of look like the armor had been connected with brackets right there and had this little gap in it. Just a just an idea, you know, throwing something at you. Now that I have this split, I just hit Control Z to put it back. I just wanted to show you. Uh, I also want to teach you about another way to extrude the mesh, but extrude the mesh without destroying the UV map. So when you paint on it, you don't get those weird stretchy lines, and you don't have to go in the UV map to fix all that. That was just one way to get kind of a metallic texture on it. Just a trick. But I'll show you another way to go about that. So if I go over here to Polygon, I deselect all by clicking off to the side. And I'm just going to hold down control and select uh, three or four of them. I'm not going to go all the way around. I'm just showing you how this works. Now with these select, now remember I split this right here so it's going to extrude a little differently right here, okay, because these polygons aren't attached to these three. Now I go over here to my extrude tool and it's going to do exactly what it sounds like it's going to do. It's going to extrude it. I'm going to select that but nothing happens. Well that's because I have to click on this little box next to it. As you notice all of these have this little box called settings. If you mouse over it you'll see settings. If I select settings look what happened. It popped way out but you have to look real close on your screen. This little sucker here is going to pop up. See this little window? It's movable. You can just click anywhere in the black and you can move it and put it wherever you want it. And this is the amount how much it's going to extrude. Well this is where you would decide how far you wanted to extrude the mesh. You can select as many polygons as you want and they'll all extrude uniformly provided that you didn't split anything like I did right here in the middle. See, because I split this so these are moving independently. Uh, these two polygons are moving independently. I'm going to hit Control Z because I don't really want to. But this is just uh, when you're done moving it, you click the check box and then that's set up the way it is. Now you'll notice these planes right here, when I paint on these, you know, after I unwrap my UVW, it's not going to be all stretchy. It's going to look fine because I extruded it using the actual extrude polygon and it created polygons as I did it. Now I'm going to show you, uh, uh, let me put this back because I don't want to have to make this cylinder again. <laughs> there we go. Yay. All right, so I'm not going to extrude that. Uh, there's also other tools like, uh, you know, if you wanted to bridge something, like let's say I wanted to create uh, a bridge between one polygon and another, you know, and it would create another polygon. Let's say this polygon here was gone, right? And I wanted to create a polygon in between these two. Well, I could select this polygon, select this polygon, then I could select bridge, and it would create something that goes from one to the other. Now, naturally, this doesn't work very well in the location that I chose to do it. But you can see that these are just other tools, you know, and I'm not going to do this. These are just other tools that you got to play with, and there's also settings for all of them. You know, you can bevel, insert, outline, just all kinds of tools here. And each one of these has their own. So, like, uh, let's say I had this polygon deleted. Let me show you this. Let's say I delete this polygon, and I go to my edge tool, and I select the edges. Hopefully this will work with me selecting all four. Usually I only select two. And I want to create a polygon in here. I could select, uh, you know, in Edit Edges, I could select Bridge. And that will create a polygon. This usually doesn't work out too well um, when you create one right in the middle of several polygons. Usually only good for creating a bridge between one polygon edge and another. You know, just warning you uh, that uh, this can cause problems on the UV map uh, bridging like this. But not always. Like, I mean, when you unwrap, a lot of times this will paint over just fine and you won't even notice that it ever happened. Um, uh, that's just, I'm talking, I'm talking very basic UV map. UV maps can be fixed for anything. You just have to know a lot about editing UV maps. Uh, Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to form my little skirt around the body, which you guys already know how to move cylinders. I'm not going to keep showing you me moving my cylinders. I've shown you that plenty of times. So I'm just going to move this cylinder around closer and create a little skirt right underneath the belt. And uh, I'll pause the video here in a second, you know, and uh, it'll kind of flip, turn the page, and I'll be all done with this. But I'm also going to create a cylinder and put it over the leg. Uh, so you can go ahead and do that without me. You don't need my help to position a cylinder around a part of the body. You should already know how to do that. And I'm going to show you how to actually take the cylinder that we created on one leg, just on this leg over here, and I'm going to duplicate that cylinder. And not only am I going to duplicate it, I'm going to show you how to mirror 
that duplication so that it'll be an exact replica but a mirror replica on the other leg. So it's gonna be a really cool uh, trick that I'm gonna show you here in a bit. So anyways, I'll see you here in a second. Turn the page. Alright, welcome back. Uh, I just uh, went ahead and created my leg armor. I just made a cylinder and spent some time in all three windows from a front perspective and a side perspective to move the vertices, then increase the amount of vertices, smoothed it, you know the works. I just created this uh, simple, uh, basic shaped uh, leg armor for my character. Also, I went ahead and I also made a belt, which you can see here. I just made a belt and put some, uh, uh, went up here to my create tab and created, uh, you know, a sphere like this. And then I just basically chopped half, half the sphere off, you know, by uh, converting it to a uh, editable poly, then grabbing it and grabbing everything on one side like that and just hit and delete. And now I have me a little pop rivet down here, you know, just half a circle, no big deal. And, uh, you know, I cloned them uh, so I'd get the same exact shape and then moved it over and then I actually added uh, the one mesh to the other mesh. Remember how we combined the belt and the undergarment? Same concept with this. I did that uh, all over here. just created this. And I also created this belt buckle out of a box and I'll show you how I did that. I went up to create. I made the box first by dragging out and then dragging up and that gives you a basic box shape as you can see down here. Now the best way to work with a box is put the box in position and you go to your modify pane after you get it in position and change its width and height like this, you know, just by going like this. Get it in position before you convert it to an editable uh, mesh. Otherwise you're going to have to deal with a lot more polygon selecting or edge selecting. It's a lot easier if you put it in position and size it uh, before you, you know, get it really close to where you're going to want it, then convert it to an editable mesh and move it vertice wise. Uh, that's just how I made the belt real quick, uh, you know, and it's just a cylinder and a couple of uh, rivets and a belt buckle and I've already painted it. Anyways, I wanted to show you how to uh, mirror an effect. So I've already got this polygon here for the leg armor and just to mirror it, all you have to do is very simple, is you right click on it and then I would go ahead and select clone. I want to make a copy of it. The copy will happen right over the top. It doesn't look like it's there, but it's there. You have it selected. Then up here in the modifier list, you just drop that down and, yep, mirror, just select the mirror modifier. Uh, the x-axis is fine, should mirror it directly the way you want it. Then you right click and you select move and your widget should be down here and you just move it over to where you want it, wherever that is. And you just kind of want to line it up, you know, and just make sure it's sitting in the exact spot as the other one just by moving it on the x-axis, you know. it's very easy to move and then you just kind of zoom in and make sure it's kind of sitting in the exact same spot on the other side you know which it looks to me like it is I can deselect and look at the body in this upper pane then look at the armor distance in between them looks pretty much the same as the other side and since all I did was move it on the uh, x-axis and the UMP body tends to be asymmetrical I don't have to do anything else to it so I mean it's pretty much perfect you know it's right where I want it it's the same as the other side uh, then all I'd have to do is select it. It still has a modifier on it, so I want it to stay here. Uh, in order to do that, all you just do is you just right click on it, go to convert to editable poly. Now it is permanently in that location and it is in its entirely separate mesh. Now most, uh, most of the time, uh, you know, you could add, you could select this, right, uh, and then you could just go over here and click attach and then select the other leg and now the legs come together you know as a single unit so you'd paint them both at the same time and then you would click off uh, attach but of course you'd uh, uh, you'd want to you know unwrap the uh, UVW before you texture it and all that good stuff and uh, in the next video I'll uh, get this out there and we'll test it out and see how this armor is starting to turn out. I'm going to go ahead and texture mine, go ahead and create your leg armor, you know, and add any little modifications you want to your armor. And uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, how this armor looks in game and go from there.